Okay, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. Welcome to the Live Scribbles, Jonathan. Uh, you can check out my website and my work at jonathanrector.com. And, uh, okay, real quick, just to get over some of the new stuff that's going on, all that fun stuff. Last Friday, you guys helped me test a stream out on Google Hangouts. And personally, it went really well. Uh, for me and not having to worry about render the videos like I'll have to do uh, tonight after this one's done um, It's just it skips a step, which is great. Um, it has this really cool feature uh, And most of you if you do Google Hangouts, you probably know about this uh, I'm still a noob when it comes to a lot of this stuff. So uh, Bear with me as I gu uh, gush over some of the cool things that I was coming across um, There's this really sweet feature where you can you guys, the viewers, can ask questions, and everybody else that's part of the Hangout, you guys can vote up if there's a certain question that was asked, like, oh, um, you know, help me draw hands. I, how do you draw the back? How do you draw stuff? And if you see a comment in there, you're actually able to go in there and just plus one it. Uh, and it starts to move it up the chain. So as the stream's going, I can look over real quick and answer a certain question. Uh, really cool. Dig all that stuff. Honestly, the whole thing was a great success from, from my standpoint in like just um, usability and cleanness, uh, uh, being able to upload, uh, I think it's 720p now, all that cool stuff, no hiccups. The biggest negative, and honestly, it's the one that's kind of got me concerned, is uh, there's a few comments in the chat about the lack of a, ch or not in the chat, sorry, in the Hangout. People are actually using the questions and answers as a um, chat, <laughs> which it's not supposed to be. And that's because there is no chat. So I felt kind of bummed out. You guys are voicing some concerns. You guys are bummed out about it. So we'll see how it's going. As of now, um, for the rest of this month, we will be using live stream like we're using. And I'll say this for every stream. Um, I think we'll only have one more. Uh, but in, in um, Starting in April, I'm going to try Google Hangouts for the month. See what happens. We'll get some. We'll see some conversation happening. You know all that cool stuff. See what you guys think, um, and then we'll kind of make a decision based on that. I'm trying to up it up to two streams a week. Maybe get one going on the weekend. Uh, so we'll see how that's going. Um, other than that, I'm going to have an up a video that's already uploaded right now on YouTube. You guys can check it out later. You can check it out now. Do whatever you like. Um, just how I got to where what we're going to be working on tonight, which is a page of the standard, loading in a thumbnail, all that fun stuff. But this show is for you guys and dolls. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, you guys need help drawing something, something comic related, if I can help you, I I'll do my best to do so. Just please leave a question in the chat and just uh, put the question in all capitals. That way it's easier for me to, uh, you know, spot that stuff and throw it around. Trying to get the website up to date. It's uh, very barren right now. I did add the donate button. Uh, some of you guys <laughs> were actually asking about that. And again, thank you so much. It's so weird to have people asking about donate buttons. But yes, if you go to my site, there's a donate button there. Appreciate any kind of help or support. And uh, and yeah, all that. So this page right here, we're starting to get towards the end of the standard here. Um, got a couple show off of uh, the standard talking to Xena some other stuff like that some background shots um, I've done all the preliminary hard work you guys if you were here during the pre-show there's just some music with me putting down um, the perspective rulers all boring stuff I would say and uh, but now we can just get into drawing some good stuff um, I have the roughs I still need to put some tighter anatomy this panel right here you know I'm really getting excited about that one so I'm going to actually jump in there right now and do some do some roughs on this one just tighten up get some anatomy going all that cool stuff so I'm just turn this some of these opacities down actually jack this one up and jack that one up and just merge these two boom boom oh manga studio Getting silly. There we go. Okay. So we got that. We're going to turn this layer down and make a new layer. And I've been getting into just using this brush pen. I just, I don't know, I dig it. I just dig the feel that it uh, does for these roughs. So here we've got a picture of the standard. He's got a, a clenched fist. So I'm actually going to have this pop over the panel. 
pretty important. It's just uh, you know, it's it's hands. Hands are very expressive. It's showing an expression, a fist. Uh, it was asked for in the script, so got to make sure it's in there. Just put some quick gesture lines. What's going on here? Get a shoulder action. So as you can see right away, what's happening is some of that anatomy is still a little, a little wonky. So let me just grab the lasso tool here. We're just gonna do a little quick fix. We don't need that tricep. Let's move it back up. Sure, looks good. And uh, I just wanted to show this. You guys will be able to see it in the YouTube video, but I've been starting to do this, just adding a quick layer in green um, to worry about my composition. So you can see where certain panels are lining up. Like here, we got his eyes the focus. Here, his eye will be the focus again because it's the face. Uh, you know, the, it, this the the composition on this third panel can actually be one point where everything is going towards the eye. Um, don't really need to worry about that too too much here. Uh, Lilac is asking John, have you considered a Kickstarter project to devote some solid free time to drawing? Um, no, not yet. Uh, the standard is going to be done at the end of this month. And it's bittersweet. <laughs> I gotta thank my buddy Will Wat Robson for uh, all the help he's been able to actually help get the project finished. Um, as you guys have heard me talk, the book I've been with the book for so long that uh, you know I wasn't turning out pages as fast as I wish I had. Uh, I've been with it for I think three years now, and it's just finally wrapping up. So it's bittersweet because I've spent so much time with it and all that fun stuff, but. Other than that, once this is done, I've been thinking about like, okay, well, there's kind of like this nervousness that happens, <laughs> where I, where I'm wondering, well, what do I what do I do next? Like, if there's not something lined up on the plate, I start to go into like that freelance hunger mode, right? Where it's, well, if I don't have something on the plate to tackle next, it's, oh God, what am I gonna do? Um, and in saying that, I'm really excited about it too because it's something that I'm do I'm just gonna spend some time. Uh, with with my <laughs> with myself, as messed up as that sounds. So I'm going to be spending some time doing a lot of studies, getting my anatomy up to snuff. Uh, you know, we all all of us artists. I'm more than sure we all feel like we we wish we could have a little bit of extra time to uh, improve the areas that we wish we were better at, or that we want to be better at. So I'm going to be brushing up my anatomy. Finally, sit down and do some solid study time with the Michael Hampton figure. No, yeah, figure design and invention, I believe it's called. I always get it back. I have it right here, actually. What the hell is it called? Uh, figure drawing, design, and invention. There it is, by Michael Hampton. Highly recommend you guys check it out. I talk about it all the time. Um, but I, I want to go through that book proper. Um, and again, spend some time with myself, just getting my style, work on that a little bit, fundamentals and storytelling, all that cool stuff. Um, and while I'm doing that, start filling up some sketchbooks with uh, whatever project I decide to move on to next. That's a personal project. That's the big thing that I would like to do next for myself is just work on my own book. So I'll be doing that as well as getting some portfolios uh, ready for like Marvel, DC, just to see. You never know, right? You never know. Um, we got Toronto Comic Con coming up towards the end of the year. I'm trying to stay active in the news cycle for that uh, just so I can sorry just let me turn the ruler on here so I can see the perspective um, just so I can see in the news cycle on that because I'm not quite sure how much it is to buy a booth at an artist alley and it's something I've always wanted to do but I've never felt like I've, I have enough content to warrant buying one or being an exhibitor um, but I'm just gonna pardon the pardon the the vulgarity here. I'm going to pop my cherry with that stuff if I can this year, even if I've got like nothing. It's just a sad booth with me sitting there drawing. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to try that out, see what happens. And uh, my big goal, which will probably, probably be, um, I'll be posting a lot of the stuff on YouTube just to share with you guys, but uh, the Ninja Turtle pitch that I started I think a year, year and a half ago. Send that to IDW and uh, see what happens. It's just a goal of mine to work on Ninja Turtles. If I can, I think that'd be uh, just the cat's ass. If I if I never do that, you know that's okay too. But I just want to try, you know. And um, that's one thing that 
wrapping up my client work and catching up on my commissions and stuff like that, that that's one thing that a lot of that will afford is this, this little hiccup in time where I can put some, devote some time to that. So that's, that's that. Um, and then yeah, another question there, when do you feel it's okay for a character to pop out of a panel like that? Uh, that's a very good question. A lot of, well, not a lot of people, but there are some artists out there that they'll pop characters over all the time. Usually it's for, see like this is actually one thing, now that you bring it up, I just want to address why I'm actually not going to pop this over uh, after I just zoomed out and saw what I was looking at. Um, ah, man, let me just turn the opacity down on the perspective. It's so, so in your face. But um, this is the main reason why. So we have a character here in the foreground on the left, okay? She's holding her arm. Uh, come on, Mega Studio. It's lagging out. So you can see her in the foreground. She's come closer to us. Now in the background here, we've got this guy, right? Now if I start popping a hand over the panel, what this does is it breaks, it makes your perspective look wrong because if if he's in the background popping over a panel and she's in the foreground and she's not popping over the panel, it, it, it's weird. Hopefully you guys understand what I'm saying. Like it just feels like it's, it's a little bit weird, right? So you got to be careful of that. The next thing too is like if there's action shots, it's one thing to consider. Like it's so action packed that the character's busting out of the panel. It it breaks um, an illusion that comics. This is why comics are the greatest thing ever. When you have little shots like this, okay. Uh, let me just get rid of that. You have a shot like this where you got a character looking at another one. This looks like something that you would see in a movie, I think. This is a shot you see all the time, right? You got the person staring at this guy. Um, here you see him flying away. They're, they're all like movie kind of stills or animations. Uh, with comics, you're allowed to zoom in, zoom out. Uh, but you're also allowed to change the viewing angle and the viewing area. So we just went from here to widescreen to like a standard definition shot, right? That's all awesome stuff. We're also able to rotate it to help make it feel like it's not a normal panel. So the other really, one of the awesome tools that we have is that you can break a character out of a panel, which takes it like to the next level where it's like, holy hell, it's getting that much more crazy or it's that much more intense. It's just another reason to do it. So in short, I guess, when is it okay? It's up to you. It's up, like not all of us, most of us hardly ever really nail every panel of a page. And when we do, it's really fun and satisfying. But just be careful when you're doing that stuff, save it. Save it for when it really matters, you know? But there are also other comics that they do it all the time. So even though I just said all that, just be careful because no matter what you do, it's all part of your personal preference with that stuff. And John's like, <laughs> yeah, we still haven't drawn the full orgy scene, eh? Oh, that's a shame. I'll sneak it in somewhere. Uh, here what I'm doing on the side here is I'm just drawing a real derpy face. Uh, it's the same face as this one. Just trying to give it a little bit more uh, perspective, I guess. So let's just delete all that, move this head over, whoops, and we can change the expression and all that stuff once we get to actually inking it. All right. You like is saying, uh, just so everybody knows, he's drawing a picture of the standard for a ten-minute sketch. Awesome. Share it with me on Facebook if you're if uh, if you're on there. I'll tag John in it as well. We love that kind of stuff for like back matter of trade paperbacks and stuff. It's always cool to get your stuff in there. Um, so we've got the girl here. Uh, let me just kind of the anatomy is kind of fine here. I don't really need to go too much. Let me just establish, I guess, like a proper elbow and her anatomy for a tricep, even though we're not going to see a lot of that. A lot of this is ripped. Uh, get her breast in there. Oh, 
let's just gesture in the perspective here for a torso and everything else is going to get all locked up. Now the fingers, however, it's been a little bit of time. I get them a little dainty at the tips there, just, just uh, <laughs> anything that you can do to help sell the female usually helps. I'm gonna chip her nails up just a little bit. She's been a little bit a little bit of a tussle. So that's about all the information I'm gonna need on this. So let's just bring this whole rough flare down in opacity. We're gonna jump right into panel three. Let's get inking this fun stuff. And once again, if you guys have any comments or questions, just leave it in the chat, uh, in capitals. That way I can see it quicker. And we're good to go. So I'm going to start actually here with the fist. Oops. Let's turn off the panel ruler. And I'm just going to rotate the screen a little bit here just so we can get a more comfortable angle. Oops, I raised the wrong side. See how she looks normal. Uh, let's make it a little bigger. With that fist, like feeling like it's kind of in your face a bit. Uh, hey Kev, Kev is asking, is the lettering done in Illustrator or Photoshop? Um, I don't do any of the lettering. Uh, our letterer for the book is Kel Natal. I believe he just, he uses Illustrator. Pretty sure. Um, I do know quite a bit of people that um, use it actually in Manga Studio. However, I think uh, in air quotes again, I love my air quotes. Pretty sure a lot of people stick with Illustrator. Um, because that's the, the professional way to do it. Honestly, I've seen people do it in Photoshop. I, I haven't got the writing experience or chops to know the difference between the two outside of Vector in Illustrator, so that's probably why. Again, I'm not not too sure, so sorry about not being able to answer that a little bit better. How's it going to look if we get the other? Yeah, we'll, get, we'll keep that empty. Alright, let's pop the shoulder up here. rendering and stuff. Uh, all right, let's see how that arm looks to the other side. Um, hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about that just yet. We'll see how it goes by the time we get the rest of it done there. Uh, John, when you flip the screen like that, how do you get the monitor to stay upright? How do I get... <clears throat> when you flip the screen like that, how do you get the monitor to stay upright? The monitor to stay upright. 
I'm not sure uh, if I understand your question correctly. Um, all I'm doing up here in Mega Studio 4, I know Mega Studio 5 has a similar thing. I forget where they're located, but I'm just clicking to rotate it. And I'm drawing on a Cintiq. Uh, even if you're using just like a tablet, uh, you should be able to just draw straight on there. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, I, I do have uh, an Ergotron... I don't know what model it is. It's like a, a clamp meant for a second monitor where you just clamp the second monitor on there. I use it for the small Cintiq and it lets me able to rotate it too. So I don't always do that all the time. But sometimes I will spin around the monitor. Yep. But when you guys see it rotating, no, uh, like that, I'm not, I'm not spinning the monitor. But behind the scenes, <laughs> this sucker is uh, spinning away. Whatever helps your hand get comfortable with the, the uh, shots. And usually, like right now, all of this kind of stuff, unless it was something weird like you guys just saw where the fist is... Uh, it, like, this kind of fist, it's not, for me anyway, it's not a comfortable angle to draw it. I like to draw it kind of like... You saw how I liked it. I just rotate it to a comfortable spot. Um, it's no different than working with paper, how you would just spin the paper around. I gotta be careful here because I want these to look a little bit like love handles, even though this guy is just ripped all hell. Um, John saying, my question: Are you cursing the day you designed such an intricate caution for Xena back in issue four? Uh, well, this is the thing, John. Actually, I don't have to draw it at all. I think maybe once I will. I'm not sure, but I know Will. He got stuck with all the pages, so <laughs> we've had a few conversations where he's brought that up. Um, he's actually changed it a little bit in hopes that people won't really notice, just to like simplify the style. And uh, we're going to go with the excuse, where let's say you always get new artists drawing Iron Man, right? And Iron Man's costume is, oh, god dang. But every artist has like a different style of uh, drawing it. All right, let me see where the panel board is cutting this stuff off. Okay. in there. I'll get rid of this. Kind of looks like he's smiling a bit. So that's the beauty of spinning this stuff around a little bit. You'll start to see things where you drew it wrong or the angle's a little off. Actually, his face is all kinds of beat up, so I'm going to have to erase all that.
those old man neck folds. I love how <laughs> his face compared to his body. <laughs> you look at a face like, oh god, and you're like, whoa, look at this guy, he's tanked. This guy is just smoked. Whoops, that's what I forgot. Got the old bird some hair. And gotta give him some whiskers. Okay, let's so got all that action. Now let's put his costume on him. So I've been doing this in stages. Sometimes I'll draw costumes uh, on the rough layer, or I'll do it right now in like the final art. Except what I do is either do it blue. Uh, for some reason, I've just gotten into doing it like red. Um, and go in. And the best part about Manga Studio with this stuff, it's just like a quick literally click right there bang and it's black line art here it's red it just it makes things clearer for you you know um, may as well use the tool I know a lot of people don't use that or use this kind of workflow where they just pick a color and draw like elements that way um, I highly recommend you try it including your workflow see see what happens you might you might actually dig it and he's been in you know a lot of shite so sure everything's ripped up give a big tear down there um, probably put some tears in his costume here uh, his chest the symbol was ripped off in the last issue Except the bottom part of it. Okay. So it's gonna be that. And then we get the the lovely chest hair. cool when you do stuff like this um, is it's like an extra layer of rendering you can really start selling some perspective with this with like chest hair arm hair that kind of stuff um, Ian's asking Jonathan if if you want an easy way to suggest older age for Gilbert change proportion of his pecs instead of drawing the horizon oh, sorry instead of drawing the horizontal line at one head below the chin draw it one and a half heads saggy man boobs yep he's got a really good point there you can definitely do that. Um, I mean, it's uh, it's a mistake that I made earlier on. Um, I, I can't get the idea of, even though he's old, still having like a Superman body, uh, except with love handles kind of thing. And unfortunately, the whole issue's, issue and a half has been like that. Um, so I can't really go back. All of a sudden, his body's going to just look different. And the average reader probably won't notice, but just in case, I don't want to start adding things like that in there. But no, what you're saying is uh, 
is right. here now just let me go back a couple pages I just need to see how ripped up of his costume we've got So I just need to remember to put some blood on his face. Yeah, okay. Hey, Justin. Uh, tonight we're working on the standard. Good old standard. We're almost done. Um, so a lot of time is going into wrapping her up. Uh, so we can give her the proper... proper treatment she deserves get her all ready for the cons and stuff okay um what am i missing here oh that's right Let's get a big cool glove going here for this hand. And rip it up. Uh, da -da, Ian's asking, John, how long would you say it took you to get comfortable drawing digitally? Do you find that it's difficult to go back and forth? Um, I don't find it too difficult to go back and forth. I honestly haven't, outside of doing commissions, I don't really do anything traditional, except sketch for myself. And that stuff, you know, I don't really need to fuss and worry too much about it being pretty, because it's just a sketch, right? Um, but in saying that, uh, it did take a while to get better digital, that's for sure. Um, it's an investment. I wouldn't say it took too long. It's mostly just getting comfortable with the tools. So when I was using, like I've been using a uh, tablet, jeez. Oh, maybe at the end of high school at least and when I first started doing digital work everything was done on the tablet um, and then I, I finally squirreled up enough money to buy the small Cintiq and I will say the Cintiq obviously adds speed to your work uh, but it's still like drawing on glass it's not like drawing with friction on paper so there's still a learning curve with that it's not like oh if you get the Cintiq and then all of a sudden Oh, happy days, you know, everything's sugar and rainbows. It's still quite a bit of work. But um, in in putting it with an actual timetable, I would say the better you are at just drawing in general, the easier it will be to draw digitally. Only because um, if you can draw right now, okay, with uh, real life tools, I always have a, I, like I say that too a lot, where everything's like, oh, it's with, draw with real life stuff. <laughs> um, but if you can draw right now, you know, if you like to pencil, if you grabbed an ink, a brush, and you started drawing it, you're the same things and rhythms and motions that you normally do with pencil, you'd be able to mimic with the ink. There's still, you know, a whole bunch you got to learn about how to use a pen and ink. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Maybe you want to do a whole comic book or something in crayons. Your skill is still there, but how you best use the tool is different. It's the exact same thing with this. So 
Uh, I know a lot of people, they look into getting Cintiqs and stuff because they're, they're not very good with a tablet. And they think that's why their digital art doesn't look as good as they think it would look. So that's honestly, I would say 99% of the time, that's not the case. Um, so just get better at drawing and all that stuff will kind of follow through. But yeah, it shouldn't it shouldn't take too too long. You'll know once you start drawing. As long as you're putting in the mileage, start op making a digital sketchbook. And whenever you're supposed to do sketches that night or whatever regimen you got on yourself, um, which you should be drawing daily, right? That's gonna help. Not only in any way that you want to draw, it'll just help. Uh, but maybe make a digital sketchbook and spend like 30 minutes a night drawing digitally, doing gestures, loosening up, figuring out what works for you. That that should work there. Uh, da, 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 da. TK is asking when the standard series is done. Are there plans to set the se sell the series as a set? Um, I believe so. I don't know if anything's really been talked about yet. There is a trade paperback you can buy right now. I'm pretty sure you can still buy it. It's for the first three issues. Um, so the the last three issues will have a trade paperback for sure. Or you can buy it online as well if that's how you like to read your comics. Yep. Hey Michael, he's asking, is there a televised revolution? Is this, what? Is this here the, oh, sorry. <laughs> I can't read. He just is asking, uh, John, how would someone sitting, oh, sorry. How would you draw someone sitting in a chair? Working on my comic, I'm having trouble um, starting off drawing a character in his chair. Uh, okay. Do that right now. Just let me double check this here. I'm just gonna turn that black. Cool. So we got his costume on him. Oh, I had some line weights to him. Should be good. Okay. Uh, how I would do it um, would be whenever I have somebody sitting on things. First and foremost, you should always consider where your perspective is. Um, you don't have to grab the ruler just yet. Just have an understanding of perspective, right? And gesture it in. So uh, we'll just pretend it's a normal illustration. And we'll do something, I don't know, a little, I guess, seeing somebody from the, looking up, looking at them from above would be a little bit more difficult. So uh, just gesture in some perspective. This stage here, you can either gesture in perspective first or kind of draw the gesture of the character first, whatever you like. Um, I think most people probably prefer to do it this way with the character first. So, um, so there's no reason to have him hunched over and be proud sitting in a chair. Maybe it's a king. Give him a little bit of like he's. I mean, we are gonna slouch him, make him seem a little bit more. You know what's going on. So let's just say we had that. Um, then I'll start adding in my perspective. So the knees are going that way. Uh, so here we go. Now I can kind of see where my first vanishing point would be. And just do the opposite here. So we got a leg going back there. Uh, this leg's fi following it somewhere, somewhat similar. So here we have to have a straight horizon line there. Um, so I'll just gesture in where the perspective would be for that. And if it was going to be a three-point perspective, we could go this route. I'll just keep it simple, and we'll just do a 90 degrees to the horizontal line. Okay. Um, now I would start worrying about getting the posture down. I don't want to put his head further. So here we got a. Um, when you're working with stuff like this, I find it easier to start with whatever's closest to us. I mean, you'll see why. Uh, so we'll have his arm here and his hand down there. Now this is why all these lines over here that go to the vanishing point, they're going to tell you exactly where your uh, limbs need to be. So your shoulder, as weird as it looks, ends here and that's where your elbow would be. Hand goes out here, the wrist, like it starts to feel a little different because, uh, you know, you're not used to drawing like that, I don't think. Um, so we have a straight line coming here, it's pecs. On into his pelvis. So again, we'll draw. He's got like a little bit of a wider stance. We're just gonna go outside the page here. Uh, 
And same thing we did with the, the hand. Just follow those perspective, or that perspective that you already have. And now that you have it all, you can see right away, okay, so his butt's got to fit into a chair here. Um, his backing's over here. Follow the same curve as, as the first line you put in the front, and then just kind of wrap it with it. He's got some cool armrests. Whoops. And his feet. All right, so it's it's like a hot mess right now. <laughs> so let's get it into a blue line and whoops, draw another layer over top. We'll just sort of put our anatomy in there. So the main thing I think about when I do this kind of stuff is whatever's closest to us, worry about that first um, because all of that is going to go to a perspective point like the other side of it. So a lot of the guesswork's already going to be done for you if you can worry about what's what's actually in front of you. Right, so again, here we got the anatomy of the shoulder. We know the elbow point is right here. So it'd probably be a little bit behind him. Can we go to the wrist? Then here we got this big old fat leg. Draw a really horrible man with slippers on here. <laughs> Again, got your knee. Let's connect it into it. That's the heel. That's the tip there, so. Alright, so that would be basically it, right? So he's there, he's lounging, he's doing his thing. Now the next thing that would make this like just blow it away, um, personally, with this kind of stuff, is you don't even have to get crazy with the light source. Whoops, uh, I should probably have a part where he's sitting. But you can actually use the lines you already have here. Okay, what we're doing is just bringing them to the vanishing points. Okay, so once I turn all that off, and you fill that with black, like a shadow. Like now he's got weight, now he's there, you know, if you wanted to go that far with it. But now he's there, just placing him like that. And this is why I suggest a lot of you guys really get into um, at least studying shadow because it can give you so much weight for your characters like it just places them there turn sideways still there so yep uh, uh, <laughs> Michael's asking question it's a workout question well it could be an art question as well seeing how as I use myself as reference from time to time the love handles would you do isolation exercises to develop them or a compound motion exercise has developed the overall area? What exercises would you recommend? <laughs> well, I have a healthy amount of love handles. I don't have uh, the sweet 
sweet ripped stuff. So I would assume a healthy diet of not moving would get you an amazing set of love handles. <laughs> you should be all right. I have faith in you. All right, so let's get a little bit fatter of a brush here. And what I'm going to do is just ask, or not ask, what we talk about, add a contour layer here. Um, sometimes I don't do this anymore. I used to always do this. Uh, now it's just for certain things I'll do this. I usually just save it for the light and shadow portions now. Let's erase this. So we can have this hand that's in the extreme foreground pop at us a little bit. Well, not in the extreme foreground. I apologize. Uh, it's in the extreme foreground of this character here. Uh, so just zoom out here. Just see it pop over him a little bit more. A little bit more. Cool. And just add a little bit more to his face here. <laughs> okay, now let's move on to the lady. Okay, so I'm actually going to do some rendering here with the lines. Now, I do this thing here where I break off the line and I'll just start adding these little like it's rendering but what it's doing is it's it's fading the line away so that it doesn't look so abrasive and it's not always just a straight line all the time it just gives it some more um, interest hopefully like for this whole tricep I could just go like this um, that looks fine but it's you know it's too much it's, there's no breathing room for the viewer here so if I just kinda break it up a little bit just add a little bit of extra line variance in there so when we turn it off see like it's a much different looking line there's some there's some interesting things going on here um, it's kind of like when people draw a straight line and they would just erase it where the light source is and everything fades there and they don't even connect the line uh, you see that a lot in Jim Lee's artwork where he'll have like a spotlight or somebody with a sun or something around where they can just have a way to have all the lines just disappear into them and it looks really cool Gonna draw her hands here first. And next, we'll just do the same thing we did before. Turn on a red layer. And we're gonna chip them up because she's been in she been in some some uh, skirmishes here. That one looks like it would <laughs> actually hurt quite a bit. Then we can just go on the lower layer and just erase the line we don't need. And then turn it black again. Oops. So she's holding her arm, it's all wounded and beat up, so her arm was actually busted up. 
So I'm going to have some of the material stretching. Everybody's clothes are apparently all <laughs> ripped up. Uh, Michael's asking, what's that? Hey, John, are you looking forward to the new Ninja Turtle movie, or are you just going to relish in past glory? Uh, I, I'm going to hold my judgment till I see any kind of trailer stuff, but I, what I saw of the Ninja Turtles for the new movie, um, it's... I'll be that guy right now to say I don't like it, um, and I'll, I'll try to explain why a little bit better. And just it's just a, a personal choice. Uh, it's like the same thing they do with Transformers. Uh, the Transformers are just they've they're like too real, and that's the part where I get that disconnect. I actually had a conversation with uh, Will the other day, uh, and I was talking about uh, an old friend that I used to have, and I showed him Alex Ross. And it was that picture, and if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I would highly recommend checking it out. I love Alex Ross's uh, artwork. It's just, it's amazing stuff. Um, but he had that picture, it was Batman, and he had taken off his cape or something. And it was a, like a mirror, I think it was, and Batman's kind of like, look, like you see his back, and he's reaching over it, kind of looking at us from the side. And his back's just all, like, torn up in scars from all the all the long nights that he's had as Batman and, you know, all his adventures and stuff. And when I saw that, I was just like, oh, man, that's so cool. And I showed my friend this, who's a big Batman fan, and, and he didn't like it. He didn't like it at all. And I was trying to explain to him, like, why not? Like, look at all the emotion. And, like, it was the fact that he looked real that it made a lot of the things that he does in the comic books seem like they actually happened, you know? It was just, it was a really cool image, and I just got, I just got... Like, it was awesome to me, okay? And what my friend said, and he's like, no, no, it's not. To me, that's not comics. And I said, well, what do, you, what do you mean it's not comics? So then he just, I think, did a Google search. I forget what he even looked for. Uh, I believe it was, like, even Ed McGinnis' Batman showed up or something. And he was like, see, that's what I love about comics. When I go to a comic book, I look for, the, like, the blown-out anatomy. Uh, not necessarily full-blown cartoons, but comic books, superheroes anyway. I just want to put that there. They're able to have this express expression. They're able to make a character like Batman seem way more awesome than when you watch a really cool Batman movie, right? Like, uh, I'll be the first to argue the, the the last three Batman movies, they were, like, I enjoyed them. I think they were really awesome. But not once did they ever show, to me, Batman being awesome. Um, I'll open up, like, uh, the Greg Capullo run right now where he's running, where he's drawing Batman. And there's a lot of things in there that just make a superhero look cool. So that's one thing. But when I see the superheroes looking like all they need is function, uh, a suit, and a utility belt, and go. I look at the movies, and like especially the newer ones, it's, it's too real. It's like, here's some battle armor, right? So that's what I don't, I, like I personally don't really care for it. Um, but they were great movies. So like Transformers, for example, you see Optimus Prime, uh, all the Autobots, Decepticons. It's just so much independent gears and pistons and metal moving around that it's just like, I just want to see a truck turn into Optimus Prime. And it doesn't have to be just simple blocks. You can like, I guess, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is there's a level of realism that can go in there before it gets too real. So when I saw the Ninja Turtles things, that's why I'm waiting to, to see something from it because I don't want to pass judgments on it. But from what I saw from the toys and stuff, like they look really awesome if that's what, if they were real, you know, they look really cool. But if you look at like the old, like the original Ninja Turtle movie, like that to me was perfect. Those were like, real life cartoons right like even their faces didn't really look like turtles they just look like how they do in, in the cartoon just with some real elements to it and then you look at the new stuff now and it's like okay well Donatello's got goggles and they're using like I don't even whatever they're finding around them to make stuff which makes sense but it's not yeah like you just said Michael there it's, it's not fantasy enough and that's what I go to comic books for. That's why I read this stuff. Is because I'm able to draw like an oh, this guy here all ripped to hell, and he's just got a simple costume on. I don't have to render the hell out of it. I don't have to make it totally detailed, like intricate parts. Even though I made a um, the battle suit all kinds of like techy and stuff, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just beating a dead horse here. I don't like. How do you guys feel about it? Are you guys really excited about it? Um, am I in the minority here?
like that, like that. Uh, let's try to go with that, right with it. Uh, okay, TK is saying new Ninja Turtles not looking forward to it. Michael saying in future issues will the standard have overalls for the next <laughs> And Ian wasn't even uh wasn't even aware of it. Uh I'm sure you'll be beaten over the head with commercials and toys and <laughs> all the fun stuff. Um, all that's also to say that I think it's really cool that there's still interest in Ninja Turtles, especially like with all the new stuff coming on, like the the new comic that was out. What has it been like two years now? Um, the Nickelodeon show, all the cool toys and stuff. Uh, as a huge Ninja Turtle fan, it's great. That's great. So if there's a movie and it sucks, you know, okay, well maybe it's not for me. Maybe the new kids uh, when they watch it and stuff, they'll dig it. And if they do. Maybe there'll be, you know, more Ninja Turtle stuff that I might like. So I can't get too butt hurt over it. There's plenty of movies already out there for Ninja Turtles that I do like. Um, I really enjoy the comic. I gotta actually get into the old comic, which I hear is really good. So we'll see. Uh, Michael saying a fictitious medium should have should have and make people want to suspend the believable um i guess it just depends you know i've read a lot of comics i'm sure you have too where it's it goes both ways there's some that are just based in reality and it makes you feel something that you couldn't normally feel and then there's the polar opposite a lot of the times where it's like superhero stuff where it's extraordinary battles and they're solving problems that no normal <laughs> human could solve. But there's room for everything. And I think that's where the beauty of it comes down. You just got to find what your taste is. And hopefully there's a lot of that going around. So you're, you're never too hungry for content. You're just satisfied. When you start getting deprived of like Ninja Turtle stuff or Power Rangers then you start looking elsewhere and then when people start going oh let's make a new reboot movie and stuff it's it's met with like ugh really whoops I forgot to draw her hand A digital alert digital art envy wow <laughs> can't read uh, I really want to make a book of my artwork I specialize in inking just recently moved to 600 dpi 6,000 by 8,000 pixels aspect ratio 3 to 4 what aspect ratios uh, solution should I work in um, I don't I'm not I'm horrible with numbers. I don't know what aspect ratio I'm working in. I can show you the page. It's like a, an 11 by 17 normal comic book page. Uh, but I do work in 600 DPI. The reason for that myself has nothing to do with, I'm sure, what you're going for. But the only reason I work in that is because when I first loaded up Manga Studio, I worked in 600 DPI. That's what I worked in Photoshop with. But what had happened was my line quality just went to the pooper. And it was just, what the hell? And what it turned out was if I went to 600 DPI, I didn't notice a huge hit in performance. Everything was fine, and my line quality got that much better. So it got really cool. And yes, I'm still going to try out for the digital pitch. That's actually uh, one of the first things on the hit list once the standard's done. But let me just check. I think we're out of time. Let's see how long we've been going for. Yep, uh, well, I guess I started a little later, but uh, we're going to wrap it up in about five minutes. So if you guys got any other further questions or anything, feel free to just put them in the chat. Please ask it in all caps, and I'll do my best to answer it for you. And for those that stuck around and maybe got in a little bit late, uh, just a reminder that for the rest of this month, uh, everything for the live streams will be done here on live stream 
and then in April we're going to move to Google Hangouts and the big problem there that I heard a lot of people saying was the lack of chat so we'll see what we can do but uh, for production wise the Google Hangouts is actually really cool so yeah if you guys aren't on Google Plus I'm not really I like I post the stuff on there but I don't really use it uh, I find it very confusing <laughs> so if you guys are on Twitter or Facebook follow me on there and uh, if you do have a Google Calendar as well, it's really cool, you can schedule time. Uh, so when I do post early in the week about the live streams happening, you guys will get email notifications and all that fun stuff too. So, all right, Let me turn the rough off and just see where we're looking. Okay, well, thanks everybody for stopping by. I appreciate it, uh, like usual. So uh, we'll talk to you next week. Uh, keep reading comics, keep making comics, and uh, we'll see you then. Bye.